podcast. Hey, man. Oh, it's me. I mean, let's be honest. I don't know. You're the you're the biology specialist. Lift weights and drink coffee. It's time for another episode of Untamed. We're rolling. What's uh, up, dude? Not much. How you doing, big guy? I'm doing well, man. How you doing? Pretty good, pretty good. Thanks for having me on again. Yeah, dude. Um, this is a late night edition. We're burning the midnight oil here, literally. Um, so we want to do this episode as kind of a response to our good buddy Trey Lede over at the Today with Trey podcast. Um, this is in reference to his start one, bench one, cut one, which for some reason, has really ruffled his feathers. Um, Hopefully Chris shows up, because I want his two cents in here too. Um, But my, I I mean, I don't know why this is such a confusing thing. Well, so, and probably put context in what is the... It's the three quarterbacks are Cam Newton... Johnny Manziel and Tim Tebow. You got to start now, one, bench you one. You got to start one, bench one, cut one. Now I don't know. Trey's Trey's claiming that it's the college version of themselves, which I mean, fine if that's what if that's what it is. Okay, cool. Okay. Um, I just know all three guys have gone beyond college, right? And I feel like that's a factor to consider because we're human beings; we grow and. We adapt. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And we either continue to grow or we plateau and then we do something else. And so my argument for this was um, I would start Cam. And originally I said bench Johnny and cut Tebow. But if this is the college version of these players, I think I would change my answer to start Cam, bench Tebow and cut Johnny. And in Trey's, Trey's podcast, he, he he claimed that my only argument for starting Cam is because he had a national title along with his Heisman. Well, if I have Cam and Tebow, I have two Heismans and two national championships. Not to mention three. Didn't Tebow have two? Did he win two? Pretty sure Tebow won two championships. I feel like I should know that. It was just so long ago. This was like a, a decade well, ago. Well, I will say this. I believe Chris Leak was the starter, but Tebow was on, on the, the championship team. team. Okay. Yeah. So technically, Tebow, I don't think, was a factor. But but I remember. Anyways, yeah, go ahead. So multiple national titles, multiple Heismans on the bench. <laughs> yeah. And one starting. And then you have the druggie, mm. you know, in Vegas or in the CFL attempting to resurrect his career. I'm not trying to hate on Johnny, but I mean, the kids made some stupid decisions. Not to say that Cam hasn't made stupid decisions. You know, he was at Florida, so it could have been him, right. not Tebow. Mm-hmm. Very much so. Um, but, you know, he had the stolen laptop incident. Then he goes to Blinn College gets recruited by Auburn and a lot of other SEC teams, and he ends up choosing Auburn, wins the Heisman, wins the national championship, not without scrutiny, of course, because of the alleged pay-for-play where, um, you know, he, he's being he was accused of accepting money to play, which was never never proven. Um, if anything, it was his dad. Right. And so they took action against his dad, which rightfully so. Um, and so that's all kind of, you know, been blown over, but I guess we should move on to, you know, what Trey's arguments are. And those are the stats, which I'm not going to, I'm not going to sit here and say that Johnny Manziel didn't put up crazy numbers. What were, I mean, yeah, I was gonna say, maybe go to like the, uh, reference.com or whatever. Yeah. might be a more accurate website than whatever the one that you were on. Um, I was on Bleacher Report, but oh, that's, yeah, Bleacher Report. Okay. that's the it just shows the numbers. I think leading up to the Heisman ceremony. Okay. Um, you said reference. 
Uh, we'll just type in. It's like statistics reference or something like that. Type in. Um, just type in Johnny Manziel stats, and it'll probably be one of the top two or three links you can do. I should probably do college. God. Four interceptions his first game with uh, CFL. Nice. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Football at Sports Reference. Right there you go. Yeah. Okay. So he played two years there. Mm-hmm. And he, well, I guess he had to be a redshirt freshman. Because if you only play two years, you have to, you gotta get at least three years total, right? Before you can leave. Right. But wouldn't it say redshirt freshman? You would think, but. I think he was a redshirt. Is, what? I don't know, dude. Well, okay, so yeah, so point we can so, look that so up. let's point out the stats. He's talking about his 2012 Heisman season or mm-hmm. the fact his career numbers. I think he's factoring in both. Okay. His, um, Individual season numbers and also his career numbers. So what people, I don't, yeah, they can't see this, but so Manziel, let's talk about his freshman year, which was the Heisman year. So he goes 295 completions with 434 attempts for a 68% percentage, which is very respectable, very good, especially for college. Because I think Josh Allen this year, who went, what, in the top 10 this year in the draft, had a 55% completion percentage mm-hmm. out of Wyoming. Just to give you a little perspective. With 3,700 yards passing, 8.5 yards per attempt, 26 touchdowns, 9 picks with a rating of 155.3. Now, to put that in more perspective, we looked up the the passer rating for the NCAA, and it's, it's, a, it's a crazy formula, so it actually ranges from negative 731 all the way up to about 1,200. Which, Which is crazy. Yeah, I was going to say, I mean, the NFL makes it more simpler because it's the highest you can get is 158.3, but in college, like Ryan said, the highest you can get is 1,261, which is obviously not going to be done. But And also, to um, give context, if you were at a negative 731, that is assuming that you com- every pass you completed goes for negative... <laughs> Or a loss of ninety nine yards, which, which I guess you could say is a little flawed. Yeah, I mean it's it's, but they're I guess they're factoring in every like every single thing that can happen. Right. Which I mean that's that's a good. I mean yeah. which makes it more accurate for sure. Um, I'd be curious to see what the lowest rating of all time was, but I think the highest rating I saw, or I guess throughout the season was I think Mayfield had almost two hundred his last two years playing. Um, but so anyway, so that's his tw- as twenty. It's his twenty twelve season, his Heisman season, his twenty thirteen season. He had almost a seventy percent completion percentage, over forty one hundred passing yards, thirty seven touchdowns passing, and thirteen interceptions. So his career passing touchdowns interception ratio is not even three to one, which I think that's not great. I think I mean it's a lot tougher obviously in the NFL, but I mean. I don't know. Three to one is is okay. I guess I should say. I mean, that's think about that. It's twenty one touchdowns, seven picks. I mean, that's that's an okay. I mean, I guess average. Mm-hmm. But then, if you want to switch over, switch gears over to, or I guess we should. Sorry, talk about maybe his rushing stats. Yeah, throw that in there. Talk about Johnny Manziel. So here's his rushing and receiving. You don't think he had any receiving? Hmm. Weird. Yeah. Um. So yeah, his. His um, freshman year, res- uh, rushing, he had 201 attempts for 1,410 yards, 21 touchdowns. And he did have – so before the Heisman was announced – He was at 19 touchdowns. He was at 19 touchdowns. 1181 with- rushing yards. Right. So he had an amazing bowl game against Oklahoma that year, which kudos to him. But, I mean, yeah, still amazing bowl game. But before that, Heisman, 19 rushing touchdowns. And then his sophomore year? Sophomore year um, – as Trey pointed out, he was, I guess, a little dinged up, so he didn't run as much. Um, so he only ran for 759 yards and nine touchdowns on 144 attempts. So he only he averaged 5.3 yards his sophomore year and averaged seven yards his freshman year. Which he might have been dinged up, but they just passed more, as you can tell. I mean, yeah. look, I mean, I mean he were 4,000 yards his sophomore year. I guess same attempts, but just. 37 touchdown passes, so he didn't have to really run as much, I guess. Mm-hmm. So, 
from what it looks I like. I mean, when you have guys like Mike Evans, you're throwing a Mike Evans. I mean, he dominated the SEC. Yeah. I mean, he's a, he's doing pretty good in the NFL, too. So. And, I mean, I guess now we can look up, I don't know, Cam Newton, I guess. Um, is there a place for me to search? Here we go. He's, yeah, right there. I mean, I will give I will give Trey this. I, mean, I don't really know Trey per se, and that's a fair assessment with, with the stats for sure. But it, as an individual, I would like to factor in just the attitude and mentality of a player. And you could tell Johnny Manziel was more about himself as a freshman in college than about the team. He had his little Money Manziel sign. He would do his little whatever with his fingers. Mm-hmm. I mean, his family was rich tycoons, whatever. I, I just don't Are think he really? was, I didn't know that about his family. You know, I'm pretty sure they're rich as heck, yeah. Um, which I mean, again, not his fault. He's born to the family, but I just, I think, well, first of all, if you go just based off that Tebow's, I mean, out of all three of them, Tebow has the best merit. I mean, in terms of his mentality and his attitude and, you know, his love of the game, which we can get his stats in a little bit too. Mm -hmm. But, uh, I just, and Cam seems like a fine guy. I think the whole pay to play thing Ryan mentioned earlier, I don't know if that really was him. I think his dad actually probably had a lot more to do with that than him. I don't think Cam seemed like he'd be pulling that off, but. You never know. Yeah, you can go to Cam stats but if you want. As to know. Um, so we're just going to go off his 2010 when he was at Auburn because he played two years um, at Florida. As I mean, he obviously was in a backup role. Yeah, 12 total passes in two yeah. years. Yeah, so he's in a backup role behind Tebow. Um, and then obviously he had the um, stolen laptop incident, which, I mean, he definitely is, was a character flaw. And then he went to Blinn College, won a national championship at Blinn College, turned around, signed with Auburn, won a Heisman and a national championship there as well. So his um, junior year at Auburn, he for his passing, he had 185 completions on 280 attempts for 2,854 yards, 10.2 yards per attempt, 30 touchdowns to seven interceptions with a 182 passer rating. So, I mean, right there, touchdown to interception ratio is off the charts. Um, Not to mention his completion percentage was over 66%. So not only two percentage points less than Manziel completion-wise. So, I mean, and, yeah, the the touchdown to interception ratio was over 4 to 1, which... I think four to one, five to one is if you can get that in any level, college or NFL. I think that's a pretty good number. Um, not saying three to one is bad, but I just I think in college you should you should get a little better in college. Yeah. But I mean the talent's just not as great yet. So yeah, and so then we can look at his um, also his rushing stats. So he he uh, at Auburn his junior he uh, rushed two hundred sixty four attempts for one thousand four hundred and seventy three yards average five point six yards attempt uh, per attempt and had twenty touchdowns also he had two receptions for forty two yards and a touchdown so he fills a comp- a a whole other stat line that Johnny doesn't even have so I mean, Cam can literally do it all. I mean, I guess the one thing we should look at put him put him on defense. Andy he's Andy punted a one for twenty two yards for Christ's sake. Jack of all trades, right? Jack there. of all trades. So another thing that Trey brought up too, which I talked, I barely talked about, was he t- about him not rushing as much his sophomore year because he said he was banged up. How big is Johnny? Like 5'10", 5'11". Oh, you can go back to it, but I I think 5'11", at the biggest. Cam is 6'6", 250 yards. Cam was running over linebackers in the SEC. Oh, and he got – I mean, there were cheap shots. I mean, he's, he's taking them in the NFL now too, but he's he gets cheap shot all the time. But, I mean, the fact that he's running over linebackers in the SEC – he makes it look easy. And he's not, quote-unquote, dinged up. And a lot of his rush, well, I shouldn't say a lot of his rushes, but I guarantee out of his 200, what, I think 64 rushing attempts, I guarantee probably almost a fifth of those were probably short yardage. I, oh, I'd for say, sure. I'd say almost probably 50 attempts were probably short yards, like goal line sneaks or third down, fourth and one, something like that. I bet he had to just 
muscles way through. Um, so, and again, I'm not putting, you know, Manziel's size against him per se, but, you know, Cam probably just takes a lot more hits throughout the year just because he's a bigger target. You know, the refs might, I mean, I know in the NFL he didn't get, again, this is the NFL, but there was a lot of time where the refs wouldn't give him the same respect about, you know, where Breeze or Manning or, you know, or um, Brady would get. Bigger quarterback. Right. Um, but I, I think he's just a better leader than Manziel, personally. Um, again, Manziel, you can say it takes a village. You can say, you know, the team it's a team game, but Cam had to will his team to a lot of victories. And I think Ryan told me earlier they were down twenty four nothing. Twenty four nothing on the road at number one Alabama. And they came back and ended up winning. I mean, to go undefeated in the SEC West and again A and M, you know, had to face that, you know, with Manziel as well, but it's a beast and they couldn't complete it. So, you know, I gotta give Newton props there. I think he's just a better leader. Um, when the game was on the line, I think he's, it means, I think he just took over and did his thing. Yeah. The intangibles are some things that you have to consider too. I mean, stats are one thing, but when you look at guys like Tebow, when, what, what year was it when he was had the famous, um, the promise where he in the locker room or was it a press conference Oh, he where he, he told the press, told everyone that you will never see a team work harder or a player work harder. It would have been, and I think. they didn't lose a game after that. Should have been 09 then. I think, I think they won the championship. Mm-hmm. Whenever they, whenever he got his team, the cha- yeah, by himself, yeah. Yep. Um, no, again, and if you go off that, again, I almost consider starting Tebow. Just be, I mean, again, I still have Cam just because I think he's a bigger body. I think he's, he's a good leader. He gets it done. Um and again, not to move to the NFL, but he he has made a Super Bowl. Um, uh, that's another good good point. Cam and, and Tebow have both won a playoff game. And Cam Newton that year they had one loss going into the Super Bowl. And Johnny's only played the slots, so <laughs> take that how you want it. Um, <laughs> um, he but did he, win at rehab, I think, too. That's <laughs> he's he's progressing. Did he did he go undefeated at rehab? Uh, actually, probably took a couple losses there too. Yeah, you're right. Um, no, but also too, and the Heisman's great. Like again, stuff in the stats is great, but you have guys like, you know, Lamar Jackson. I mean, I think even maybe Mark Sant or not Mark Sanchez, but I mean Carson Palmer. I mean, you had. I mean, don't get me wrong. I mean, what didn't Trent Richardson win one too? Was it Trent Richardson or Derrick Henry? Well, I know Derrick did. I know Mark Ingram did. Trent Richardson. Trent, Trent Richardson not. did not win one. Because Bama's only won two Heisman's. Oh, and not to mention, actually, if you could pull it up, look at the look at the competition. I'm pretty sure Manti Teo was actually in the running for the Heisman the year that he was. Yeah, that Manziel was. So like, was. come on. I mean, Manziel deserved the Heisman. I'm not gonna take that away from him. But it, literally, a guy that makes up his girlfriend or has a guy catfished is your biggest competition. And Colin Klein. That's the, that. Those are yeah. Isn't the case that guy? Uh, yeah. I mean, not the strongest Heisman candidate. Class. He deserved it. I, I will admit, especially out of those three, but I mean, there's been some great competitions, and that's not one of them. Um, but yeah, I mean, you, you can go into it more. We can go into Tebow's stats if you really wanted to, but I just know he had the epic 29 touchdown passing and 22 rushing before the Heisman, which he finished the season with 32 passing touchdowns and 23 rushing touchdowns. So he had over 50 total touchdowns. Which I think mm, if you want to talk about career stats. Yeah. Career, I mean, the, he had less, I mean, which which year do we want to talk about? So Tebow had 16 total interceptions in his four years. Menzel had 13 in his second one, and he had 22 total. I mean, in two years of playing, that's in a 170.8 career passer rating, which is less than Cam, but better than Menzel's. Yeah, his completion percentage is his average is 66.4 overall, so comparable. Nine point three yards attempt per attempt. I think more than Johnny. I forget the exact one, but that Johnny was something in the eights, eight point something. His sophomore year, which is the year he won the Heisman, thirty two touchdowns to six interceptions. Yeah, I, which is over five to one. So, and then we can look at his rushing too. Oh, and look at that. He's he, had three tackles in his career. No, he's. I mean, um, fifty-seven total rushing touchdowns. So his in his his Heisman year, he had twenty-three rushing touchdowns. So if you're going off stats, what's more important, yards 
or touchdowns. I'm going to I'm going touchdowns to overwhelming games. I'm going to overwhelmingly agree with you and say touchdowns are more important than than yards. Yep. Touchdowns win games at the end of the day, man. You can get 20,000 yards rushing if you want, but if you don't get any touchdowns, you're not going to win. You're right. So, I would say it's a pretty tough head-to-head battle with Cam and Tebow now to start or bench and I'm going to reassign Johnny to go ahead and serve pretzels. Or help give AA talks to high school kids or something. Because he's not he's not on my team. I'm sorry. I don't want T I don't want Johnny on my team. And I'm gonna go back on another thing that Trey said about that my only argument with Cam was the national title and that it takes a village. You you do know the head coach was Gene Chizik. And if we can, let's pull up Gene Chizik's head coaching record, which will be overwhelming. And first of all, sorry to cut you off. In in his, again, I don't really know Trey too well, and I'm sure you're a great guy, but Gene Chizik, he literally, you said that Gene Chizik was a, one of the major reasons that they they won. Are you kidding me? Gene Gene Chizik? Mm-hmm. Look at that. Okay. On the coaching record in Iowa State, the two years before he came to Auburn, he was three and nine and two and ten. Look at his over just look at his overall. He has thirty eight wins and thirty eight losses overall as a head coach. And let's be honest, if it wasn't for Cam Newton, I mean which they went fourteen and zero, at best he's probably sitting at thirty two and forty four. So maybe. So let's look at I mean, I don't give fuck all about Iowa State, 5-19 and 19 record. We don't need to talk about that. Okay, that's garbage. That's all around just that's a fair, yeah, that's fair. big heaping pile of shit on fire th- with s- someone just throwing grease on it. Um, 2009, his first year at Auburn, 8-5 with an outback out bowl win. I'll give him this, dude. He won three bowls when he was at Auburn. Gus has won one, which is pretty horrifying. Um, 2010, he goes 14-0, obviously, and they win the national title when he has Cam Newton. The following year, he goes 8-5 and five again. He does win the Chick-fil-A Bowl. And the last year he's at Auburn, he goes three and nine. What village are you talking about? I'll even pull up Gus Malzahn's head coaching record. Again, this guy had six years total, and three of the six years, he had three wins or less. Now, granted, seven years coach head coaching. Overall, he's 54 and 25, so at least he's almost 700, but he's not. But his worst season, he was 7 and 6. So his worst season, 7 and 6, whereas Gene had three seasons out of the six total seasons he's ever coached with three wins or less. Which is unreal. So since he's been at Auburn since 2013, he's been f- he went he's gone 45 and 22. That is not a great coaching record, especially for what I, I mean. I guess I'm biased, but for a prestigious, you know, I mean, prestigious football program like Auburn, that's not. We'll, we'll, after this, we'll look at um, Tommy Tuberville because he was at Auburn for ten seasons, so we can compare well, coaching eras. Better a barometer, bit. yeah, yeah. But I mean, here's the other thing too. He's Lost the national championship to Florida State. Lost the Outback Bowl to Wisconsin. Won the Birmingham Bowl against Memphis. Lost the Sugar Bowl to Oklahoma, which I mean, Baker Mayfield. I you know I get it. And then lost uh, to you know we had John Franklin, we had um, Sean White break his arm mm-hmm. in the opening drive. Yeah, oh, and then the Peach Bowl where we had the we came off a devastating beat down from Georgia in the SEC championship game. 
and lost and, to undefeated and team. lost to an, a very very talented UCF undefeated team. Undefeated team. So, yeah, I um I'm still trying to figure out this village of yours. Um, let's look up Tommy real quick. Tommy a Tupperville. When he was at Auburn, he was at he was eighty five and forty. Now that's pretty consistent, but I think he has the most bowl wins. Well, he got screwed too, though, because they went thirteen zero and zero four, right? And he didn't get the chance to. But he's had a lot of. I mean, we didn't have a lot, but he had thirteen. I mean, he was consistently winning, you know, eight eight games per season. If he was going to be a coach that was going to win multiple, or you had know, to win multiple national titles. I think it would have been Tupperville, because you have the eleven and two season, and you have the nine and four season, which doesn't look great. But he had a lot of really good players under him. So just to compare apples to apples, if you will, um, and his overall record as a coach, is 159-99. And at all four schools, Ole Miss, Auburn, Texas Tech, and Cincinnati, he does have winning records, which is, I mean, that's it's pretty good. I mean, to do it at four different schools, it's not bad. Yeah. So, give him that. And then I want to look up who the defensive coordinator was when we won the national championship. I think it, I think it was it was Paul Rhodes or Ted Roof. Dude, you got, we, I, I love this whole cross-podcasting. You got to be honest, it's pretty cool. Yeah. Got a little fun stuff. response come back. Um, 2010 2010, 2011 what am I doing yeah it was 2010 might have been that'll do it yeah Ted Roof Ted Roof let's take a look at old uh, Ted Roofy there let's take a look at old Ted Theodore Roof what's he doing now Roofmeister he is the associate head coach of NC State. Uh, mm. Well, I guess we can. How the mighty have fallen. I guess we can look at his, you know, coaching record too, since it sounds like he might have some data. What the hell just happened? Okay, that's fair. Technology. Okay. Ted Roof. Head coaching record. Perfect. Okay. Coaching record. What? Four wins. <laughs> this is this is as a head coach, need I mind not. Right. But still, man, this still adds to the village. So, Coach Ted Roof. Coach at Duke as a head coach from 2004 to 2007, so four years. Four wins and 42 losses. Including a winless season in there. Including almost two winless seasons. Almost three. This looks like, is this Beatty? He's he's better than me. (laughs) So, So the village... Again, the village. You had Gene Chizik, which had three teams in six seasons win three games or less. You have Gus Melzon, who has done an okay job. I mean, I'm not saying a bad job as a coach. He's only won one postseason game in his head coaching career. And you have Ted Roof, who doesn't even have double-digit wins as a head coach. But he... My point is is that Gus was the offensive coordinator. He was handed a gift with um, Cam Newton. And then you had Ted Roof coaching our defense, and our defense barely cracked the top fifty, right? For overall defense, so uh, actually, could you could you go to out to Auburn's uh, year in in twenty ten and actually look at the game results? Because I think we we were talking about this earlier before the podcast started rolling, but we wanted to see um, Ryan was telling me how they Auburn defense gave up so many points per game, and um, where can I select? Um, who? Yeah, I guess that's it's okay. Best, that's yeah, I just click it. Just click it all the way over there. And that's right. All my little quick, quick, quick. There we are. Okay, here we go. 
Um, schedule and results. Yeah, I'll do it. There you go. Just take a gander at that. I was going to say, actually, you list it off. I'm going to actually count the points and try to get an average okay. for it. You go ahead and list off how many so points you have. So Arkansas State, 26, 14, 24, 27, 3, 34, 43, 17, 31, 24, 31, 27, 17, 19. Okay, so they gave up 24.07 points per game. That's not impressive. (laughs) No, no. But then you look at their points per game, and that's a whole different story. Yeah, let's do it. We might as well. Let's do it. All right. All right. Right. Uh, 52, 17, 27, 35, 52, 37, 65, 24, 51, 62, 49, 28, 56, 22. Divided by 14. Average 41.2 points per game. Yeah. So, I mean, hmm. and you had a quarterback that was throwing it, running it, and catching it, and punting it. So, not to mention the Alabama game, a game which they were down. As Ryan said, I believe twenty four nothing. Twenty four nothing. He came back and won twenty twenty seven. Yep. That's unreal. And so, to, I mean, not to mention, sorry, okay, they beat at the time twelfth ranked South Carolina, twelfth ranked Arkansas, sixth ranked LSU, nine ranked Alabama in Alabama, eighteenth ranked South Carolina again, and number two Oregon. So they beat six out of fourteen games were ranked. That's pretty dang good. And yeah. they played a Georgia team that wasn't ranked and a Clemson team that wasn't ranked, but we now know Clemson how good they are now. But So, I mean, that's probably eight legit games. Eight legit games that were... And I mean, if you look at those games, South Carolina the first time, we scored 35 points. Against Arkansas, we scored 65. Against LSU, we scored 24. Alabama, we scored 28. South Carolina, we scored 56. In the bowl championship, in the SEC championship. Yeah, and then in the national championship, we scored 22. So. I guess now go to Johnny's schedule in 2012. We're just going to break this bad boy down, baby. Yeah, we are. And we're going 2012. Screen it actually shows the points per game and points. Does it really? Right there. <laughs> We're idiots, dude. We are, but you know what? It's okay. It's late, dude. It's like midnight. Okay, not to mention you got okay Kevin Sumlin as a coach. That's not. He's better than Gene Chizik. I take Kevin Sumlin in a heartbeat. Yeah. Are you, are you kidding me? I don't know. So their points per game are forty four point five. It's pretty impressive. Which again was more, but points against well actually. Well, actually, one less game. Hold on. It's a 283 for 21.77 points. So, eh, a field goal difference. Field goal difference. So, you would probably consider that somewhat consistent. Yeah. And the end result for one team was a national championship. I guess scroll down. Let's see these bad boys. Let's see the schedule and results. So, they lost their first game to... At home. At home to Florida. 24th ranked Florida. Okay. At Ole Miss and at Louisiana Tech there. They won by a field goal at Ole Miss and they at Louisiana Tech. Won by two at Louisiana Tech. Won by two. And they lost at home to LSU. And this was the year I told you they beat the snot out of us at Auburn, 63-21. They did win at Alabama. I give them that. But, I mean, yeah, you, you win at Alabama, but you lose both home games. Two, two home games no. to 
23 and 24 ranked teams. And again, like Ryan said at the end of the day, you know, Heisman's are great. Off the stats are great, but at the end of the day, you're going to get remembered more for your for your championships. Plain and simple. I will know more about a player by a championship than if they won a Heisman. Just, I mean, Derrick Henry, I'm not going to remember Derrick Henry won a Heisman. It's not, I just won't remember that. But I'll, I'll remember, you know, Brady winning five Super Bowls, Eli Manning winning two against the page. I mean, I'm going to remember that kind of stuff. Um, It just means more, so... That's funny because that's the SEC slogan. Is it really? It means more. Yeah. I mean, but there yeah, I mean, that's. So I'm going to stick with my, I guess not my original consensus. I'm starting Cam, I'm benching Tebow, and I'm cutting Johnny Manziel emphatically. And I'm going to hold his hand and escort him out the door. And into rehab. Again, I don't. I don't know if he's always that way, or if you know, being a star, A and M got to him. Because I mean, didn't he go? Didn't he try to like sneak into parties like in Austin, like Longhorn parties? I'm pretty sure. He might. I don't know. Did he might have? I was gonna say again. Don't know him personally. Who knows? But obviously, something got to him. He's got some inner demons that he's got to work out. And you know, I really hope the best for him in the CFL. Uh I, you know, I, I won 50 bucks off of him not making the playoffs with the Browns, so that was always good. <laughs> but, uh, no, I'd love to see him succeed. I really would. You know, I don't want to see him fail at all, but just no offense, but I just cannot – I would not have him start or be on my bench. I just – I'd have to cut him as well. I just can't. I just can't do it. Me neither. Um, but since we're talking about important things in sports, Khabib and Connor. Ah. We didn't get to talk about this last time, and I guess this is the best time to talk about it since Big Smooth's not here and he doesn't really know anything about right. it. He knows fuck all he, about he, UFC, so right. He just turns it, he just turns off his mojo when he's, he's yeah, he's a, yeah he just drinks beer during it. So yeah, it's we're gonna get him an A as well. I think it's the best thing. I'm just kidding. Yeah, I'm just kidding. Yeah, he's, he's fine. No, till, he's not till the twelfth one. Um, <laughs> yeah. So let's. I mean, let's talk about. It. I mean, what's what do you think? First of all, I'm glad it's happening. I gotta be honest, I never thought it would happen. Um was never really a fan of Khabib because I guess when I first started watching UFC maybe like a year, year and a half ago, maybe ish. He just every time he was supposed to fight, he somehow had an illness or didn't get weight or he just it just was annoying. So I was like, Well, geez, I I mean I saw him fight for the first time against some no name guy, which he won, but you know. Um, I'm excited. Obviously, after the whole incident with with Connor throwing the dolly into the bus, and I mean, he, Khabib is 26 and 0, which is crazy, impressive. It's, I mean, here's the thing. Given the fact that Connor hasn't fought in UFC in nearly two years, I would say Khabib's actually legitimately probably favored. I, I don't know the odds. I'd have to like look. Well, he's fought this year already. Right, and. And yeah, I was gonna say not that. an impressive fight though. No, and I saw that fight. I mean, I think we actually, yeah, you were there too. Yeah, we went to we we're going above Wild Wings, but ended up having to go to Hooters to watch it. But um, yeah, like you said, it wasn't impressive. I mean, it was it was nice. I mean, he, he got the job done. But again, who knows? Maybe because his opponent didn't show up and he had to fight a no aim guy. He didn't really have to fight that hard. But um, I'd say on paper, probably Khabib has the advantage just because he, like Ryan said, he's fought UFC this year. He's He's 26 and 0. He's probably hungry after the whole Dolly incident. Whereas Connor has not fought. It'll be 14 months, and that was boxing. And he hasn't fought in UFC since November, I think, of 16. When he beat um, Eddie Alvarez and like for the lightweight belt. Was that 14 seconds? or No, that was the second oh. round. Second round. Oh, knockout. okay. Then I forget the guy. You hit him with that. You're thinking of Josie Aldo. There it is. Yeah, I was going to say that was for wow. the For the featherweight. That was, um, that was geez. That yeah. was unbelievable. The original champ, champ. So coming back. What? So what do you? I mean, what are your? I mean, what are your thoughts? I don't. I don't feel good about this fight for Connor for the same reasons. That's been so long, and I know there's been some distractions since he's last fought. Well, plus he has a kid, and he's got. I th- I thought. I think I heard he has another one on the way too. Maybe. And the Irish gorilla is not messing around. No, he's not. He's hammer fisting it. He's yeah, fisting something. Um, 
Yeah. He'll be here all week, guys. But, yeah. Untamed with Ryan Costanza. He never turns it off. No, never. But Khabib's a guy that, like what you said, he's always a letdown. Whenever we're, whenever he's scheduled for a big fight, like you said, something how he misses weight, he has an illness. Um, but did, didn't he have like a serious one where he had to go to the hospital because he was so dehydrated because he was trying to make weight or something? I believe you're. You might want to check that out. I want to see. see if could, I wonder if we could pull up like a history of the his like supposed fights or whatever. But um, yeah, I think you're actually right though. I think you're actually right though. He did. There was one serious one where he dangerously, dangerously was cutting it close and he ended up having to, the night before, two nights before, something like that, just, it happened to him. I forget which incident it was, but, oh yeah, there it is. After 209. Okay, so that was March of 17. Let's do junkie, MMA junkie. And I guess he was 24-0, so I guess he's had two fought, two fights since March of 2017. So. Yep, he was hospitalized after his weight cut. Um, had to cancel the co-main event because to me, that's just, that's, that was his original fight with Tony Ferguson. Mm-hmm. I think so. Oh my God. So there's no way, there's no way Dana will ever do a Tony Ferguson Khabib fight. That's twice now. I was right? going to say, well, I, was gonna say, I guess it depends what happens with this fight. You know, if Khabib, if Khabib wins, well, they could have a part two. Who knows? But I think if Khabib wins, then Khabib kind of writes his own schedule then. Um, I'm sure they're going to have a part two. But, uh, yeah, no, I think you're right. I mean, that's that just sucks. I mean, to me, that's that's to me, that's unprofessional. Agreed. I mean, I mean, I feel bad that you were hospitalized, but at the same time, it's your job as a fighter to make weight. I know it's like. I'm speaking as a spectator, but that's your job. That's your job. That's what you get paid hundreds of thousands to potentially millions of dollars to do is to show up on your way in at your correct weight for your weight class. Now I hope they do change the weight classes in the future to where it's every like five pounds. So that way, if you are over, then you just move up a weight class, which then you won't see this, which would be good for the sport. For yeah. Sure. Cause then you wouldn't see all these drastic weight cuts and, I mean, you wouldn't have people giving excuses like Joanna gave for when she fought Rose the first time. She said that the, that weight cut was the hardest weight cut she's ever had, and she just didn't feel right. And it's just like, you know, maybe that was a factor, but I don't know when it happens to you twice. Right. I don't know if that's real, but I think it's healthier for the weight or for the fighters because, I mean, if you're five pounds over, then you move up a class. And then you don't have to cut any more weight. No, I I think it's great. Not to mention for the fans, like you said, it's just I get hyped up for a lot of a lot of fights, and I'd say I'd say over fifty percent of the fights that I get hyped up for usually get one of the one of the main or co main events gets scrapped. Gets scrapped because or some guys to replace it because they can't cut weight. You know, it just it just sucks as a fan for sure. Um, I know as a as a fighter for it has to it's got to be bad too because you work all that you know that time and you train. Months and months and months to for one night for fifteen twenty five minutes maybe even less depending on how it goes but yeah I um, mean I mean weight cutting is devastating especially in the fight world because you're training and on top of that you're trying to lose weight which means you're losing energy because I mean losing weight you're expending more energy than you're consuming and so if you continue on that path and that's when the dehydration happens and you get more fatigued. Your body's trying to react and your metabolism's all out of whack because it's trying to, you know, your leptin's trying to respond to that, you know, because it, it, it feels threatened because it's just trying to, I mean, your body wants to, at the end of the day, wants to survive. And if you're losing all right. this weight, your body's going to have to react. Oh, fight or flight, yeah. Yeah, it's going to have to react. So, I mean, that in itself is just tough. So having these big you know, weight class differences where it's every like 10 pounds. But I think from, what is it? From lightweight to welterweight? Is it 15? 155 to 170? And then from, yes. then from yes. that to to middle middleweight, it's 170 to 185? 
I was gonna say I forget if it's middleweight or not, but yes, I think it does. It's and the fifteen. Then, then light heavies one ninety five. I just don't understand the increments. No, I th- I think you're perfectly right. It's a flawed. Again, I don't know who made the system, but it it definitely is flawed when you when you when you talk it out and when you examine the history and the frequency of the amount of of miscuts or injuries or hospitalizations that the people have. Um, I was gonna go back to your point about um, damn, what was it? it was a couple of seconds ago too. Um, can't remember. I don't know. I was gonna say I had. I was gonna say you were right on something. I can't. Uh, can't think of what it was. Uh, uh, weight cutting. Possibly. <laughs> I don't know. Say, oh, I don't know. Man. I don't know. I'm getting old. They're not. Dementia setting in. Sorry. Yeah, it's okay. Drink more coffee. Family history. You know, I don't. Well, I know. I was say you love coffee. I love coffee. I'm actually not a fan of coffee. One day I aspire to be a coffee aficionado. Yeah, and I I, I would want to be on like a Gordon Ramsay show where he has me blind taste test coffees, and I can tell you where it's from and if it's a dark roast and medium. I want to be like that. I say that'd be cool. I aspire to be like that. That'd be cool. A little, co- a little coffee connoisseur sommelier, if you will. Yeah. What does that supposed to mean? No, it's, it, it means you're a wine expert sommelier, but so it's not really associated with coffee. I, the word's really cool to say, though. That's, that yeah. is pretty cool, but I don't want to be that. Right. No, I understand. That's my fault. Um, But yeah, man, I, I'm excited for the fight, though. Um, Again, really hope they all make cuts. Everything's fine because I want to see the fight. I know we're gonna have a big thing. I don't know where we're gonna watch that, but it's it's gonna be big though. It's gonna be big, so I'm excited for it. Um, definitely want to see Connor win, just because. Yeah, I it'd be good to see him back in the ring. Um, obviously, these two have history. Their teams have history, and it's gonna be it's gonna be intense. So I guess we can talk about that too. Their history. Um, I don't know how far back it stems. If it started as something that was just trash talk. And then it escalated to an incident at the in New York. From from what I gather, Khabib went up to like his name's Artem. I don't know Artem Lobov. Name. Yeah, and he Connor's was Connor's teammate talking mad trash. And they got in like a little altercation where I think Khabib actually like slapped him or something or put his hands on him or something. That sounds right. Yeah. And so, if you know Connor at all, he said it in the ring. I can't remember if it was after the Eddie Alvarez fight. But he said, "If if one of us goes to war, we all go to war." And I think he me- I think he means that wholeheartedly because he chased down that the UFC bus, and that's when he threw the dolly, and he got, you know, arrested and all that all that nonsense. Well, I mean, think about where he's from. I mean, Ireland is very prideful, very that's true. Very, I mean, you got you have a brotherhood. And it's I mean, you you ride or die. You live you live for your team, and you kill if they're not. I mean, it's just. It's a it's a blood it's a blood and war, man. They are they are. I mean, I mean, you've seen all the TV shows and they fantasize the stuff, but it's a real deal. I definitely fantasize. You better. I do. Is it about me? No. Oh, that was, I have yeah, crazy <laughs> weird thought. I like people with full quads. Oh well, they, <laughs> I'm out. Yeah, yeah, you're definitely out on that's that. That's fair. I was gonna say I I cannot satisfy him on that one. <laughs> um, but yeah, so he takes he. I think they flew overnight from Ireland, didn't they? Fly overnight. Did he fly around? I thought he was just there. He might have been. I was gonna say I because of the who fight. knows fake news. Who knows? Who knows? But uh, fake news. <laughs> God, I know. Um, here's, the other thing we never really talked about was um, Derek Lewis and Francis Ngannou, oh. and probably the worst fight in UFC history. That was worse than Stephen Thompson and uh, Woodley Part Two. That was. Yeah, I think you're right. That was. That was, I think it was worse. Can you check the total amount of strikes landed? I think it was maybe 50. I think you're right. I, I know through like the third or fourth round it was 20. It, I, okay, that was, okay, that was one of the strangest fights I've ever seen because it almost looks as if they got paid to do the least amount of stuff possible. For five rounds, I mean, it's 25 minutes. Of literally staying around, not moving, throw maybe a couple punches and kicks. You land about three or four of them. Um, Here we go. Oh, it was 15 minutes, sorry. 
Only 31 total strikes were landed between Derek Lewis and Francis Ngannou. Was it a five-round fight? Uh, scroll that down. I thought it was five rounds, but apparently... Because I, they... I think they were the co-main event, weren't they? Yeah, so they were a five-round fight. Uh, I, I, I'm I, just speechless. Uh, as <laughs> I, can f- tell, I can tell you're at a loss for words. I just... As a fighter, again... Oh. No, I guess it says it says three. So I guess it was only three. What? I thought it was a co a main event. Was well, it because it was a co main event? Mm, it, it says three. Which I mean, e- either way. So here's the, here's the crazy thing. So according to Fight Metric, Ngannou landed eleven total strikes, whereas Lewis was credited with twenty. Lewis only connected once to Ngannou's head. And Gano only threw seven strikes in the opening round. Is that not the only thing that separated that decision was nine strikes? That is that is crazy. The fewest combined strikes landed in a three round UFC fight. So it was a three round fight. Pulver versus Roque, twenty three, and coming in at number two, Derek Lewis versus Francis and Gano at thirty one. That is, I mean, that was like, it was such a letdown because of the anticipation because Ngannou was such a talent and Derek Lewis was a guy that was just on the rise. He had just come off a huge knockout victory. Mm-hmm. I just, you train all this time for, I, again, you train all this time to fight and you literally throw 11 strikes? In fif- okay, okay. 15 minutes. That's not even a strike per minute. No. That's crazy. Well, I mean, Lewis is barely a stri- over a strike per minute. I was going to say, at least, again, neither of them were good fighters, but at least Lewis, he kind of looks like he wanted to be there. Mm-hmm. Like, part of him for, like, maybe two minutes of the 15 minutes, like, looked like he really wanted to be there. But, yeah, I remember watching that and just... Like that, I mean, it, you're not getting, I mean, not to mention, that's probably 25 minutes of your life you're not getting back because you have the intro, you watch the fight, it breaks in between the rounds, not too much, but then the after where they're talking about it and discipline, I mean, that, good God. Like, I don't know how much money they got paid for that, but I wish the, too much. the fans would got paid some to watch that. They should have gotten some sort of refund. God. But then, yeah, go ahead. I don't know. Was that because Cormier fought after that was that was a good fight though. The Cormier fight was phenomenal. Cormier and Stipe was and good, you know. It's uh, Stipe. It's not Stipe. Jesus well, H. He had deserved the proper name because he can't even hell, win. Man. He can't even win. Stipe I mean, <laughs> holds the most title defenses at the heavyweight division. Oh well, in UFC history. Did he beat Cormier. Yeah, he did not. Okay. He got knocked out. He's like Manzel to me. Stipe Miocic. Get the fuck out of here, man. I'm going to pull up that knockout because it was that good. No, and, I, and you know what? Give now that I'm not the hugest DC fan, but, you know, he's been screwed by, you know, John Bon Jones and given the fact that he hasn't been fair. And it's, so I'm, I'm glad that Cormier got to win that. And are you going to pull it up? Mm-hmm. What are you going with the elbow? Or was it? No, it was an uppercut. Oh, it was an overhand right. Oh, my God. Damn it. I think it's an elbow, though. No, it was an overhand right. Are you kidding me? It's an overhand right, dude. I'm telling you. I go back and... Z- and Puff it, puff it I up. can't puff. You can't, you can't, you can't literally full screen it. What the heck is that? It's not full screen. It's an overhand right. It's an over. He let. What? Are <laughs> dude, you out of your mind? He led with his fist. <laughs> Ryan, his elbow. This is the worst angle. The, whole, the problem is we don't have replay at a different angle to see it. Okay. It, you sure you can't pull it up on a different? There's no other videos on this. I'm sure there are. 
There we go. The f- five right. minutes, 47 seconds. Or the two minutes, 40 seconds. All right. Quit fucking yelling. Unbelievable. I'm telling you, dude, it was an overhand right that got him. I think it was an elbow. Now you're dropping shit on the floor. Okay. Who is this guy? Are you okay, well kidding me? That video is not going to work. Well, oh that's my, God. That's my apologies. Just like some dude in a wife beater talking. saying some shit that no one cares about. Okay, the full 547, that might be it. What about this right here? No, that works. It said BJ Penn, so uh, I'm says, hoping that's reliable. It did say it lands an uppercut. So it looks like you might be right. Damn. I'm just hoping we get a... Oh. What's up with these angles, man? Here, this this is good. Oh yeah. Here it comes. It's not a good angle. It's not a good angle. Yeah, but an uppercut wouldn't it be this? Why? Is it? That was an overhand. Did it say uppercut somewhere? I think so. Go to go. Uh, yeah, right there. Okay. What the? What is that? What? It didn't say anything. He lands a right hand. Right hand. The hand is distal to the elbow. The elbow is proximal. So... Yeah. No. You're welcome. Okay. That was wrong. Um, yeah, you were. You're welcome. But that was a good knockout for Cormier. I thought that was well-deserved. Um, Stipe Miocic. 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 No, nah, he's actually pretty good. I'm just joking around, but, you know. Yeah. Yeah, whatever. But, uh, yeah, I'm excited for the fight. Hope, Con- Hope Connor wins. Um but I don't think it's going to be a quick one, though. I think it's going to be – they're going to feel each other out. It's going to go at least into the second round. Um, I just don't think I see a knockout at least early. You don't? Not or I, I think it's going to take at least a couple rounds to do it. I don't know. I feel like Con- – I don't know. I think it would be smart if Connor kind of If waited. anybody gets knocked out early, it's going to be Connor. It's going to be him trying to take, you know, too many risks – because you know have, well, that's one that's his one downfall is he will take risks just like Cody Garbrandt. Yeah. But I mean Cody was Cody fought scared. He got there was a point in the fight where he got stunned. Mm-hmm. And then after that he was just like he was like a scared dog. He trying to survive. Yeah, which is too bad cuz I I mean give it to Dillashaw, job, man. I'm a I do like Cody. I, I hope somehow he can. I don't think he gets a part three. If it is going to be a while, it just kind of sucks. But um, no, but we will apparently have a Kajudo, um Dillashaw fight. Really? Because don't you remember Kajudo said he wanted to fight the winner of Oh, that's right, because he right. wanted to be the champ champ. Everybody wants to be a champ champ. Everyone wants to be a champ champ now. Hey, good for him. I nah, who that would be? Mm. That would first of all, I was an impressive win over DJ. Um, he definitely was a better fighter that night. DJ didn't look like himself. He really didn't. He looked like he just didn't care. Uh, yeah. He, yeah, it was kind of slow. And then, uh, yeah, Henry just had a few more moves. And yeah, good for him. So Yeah, I mean, it was it was cool to see. I mean, historical moment. How many title defenses? Was it 14? Or is that a crazy number? Uh, no, you're close. I thought it was like 11. I believe like it was 11 or 14. Yeah. I feel like we can look this up. Yeah. that's Yeah, it does help having a computer um, and having actually someone that knows how to work it. Yeah, that's the problem. That's the <laughs> variable. <laughs> how many? It was double digits. It was double digits for sure. Yeah. Did. What the? F- what the? F- Good spelling. What's his name? Demetrius Johnson. You're right. His name's not even popping up. That's weird. Am I misspelling it? Eh, Whatever, dude. I was going to say that was... 
Mighty Mouse. How many title defenses did this guy have? Oh, the one down. Right here? I'm assuming that would. You would think. Should do it. He's 31 years old. Yeah, he's in great shape, though. Yeah, he is. 27 wins, two losses, one draw. By eclipsing Silva's for his 11th title offense. Okay. So he had 12? Because uh, Ray Borg was the next one. Well, no, I, I, no, he beat Ray Borg for his 11th title defense is what I'm getting from that article. Are you? Well, so, okay, Johnson set a UFC record by eclipsing Anderson Silva for his 11th title defense. I got you. So, he had 11 title defenses. I don't think he fought after that until he fought Kududo or whatever his name is. So, I think it, is, I think it was 11. Mighty Mouse grabbed a hold of Ray Borg's arm and just refused to was that the, let Was that the go. one where he was like midair? Yeah, where he threw him up. He did like a Dude, he's, toss and then he went and got him an arm, in an arm bar. No, he's he's, he's he's a hoss, man. I Much respect. I mean. That was nasty. Let's talk about this, dude. This is insane. Okay, so what Ryan's showing me right now. F.A. Ajagba. Hope I'm saying that right. That sounds and right. And Curtis Harper. I think... I think F.A. Ajagba is undefeated, by the way, as a boxer. This is boxing. Curtis Harper is 13-6. and six. Yeah, was 13-5, and five and then... And so this happened today, tonight, August 24, 2018. Curtis Harper, at the ring of the first bell, steps out of the ring... And walks out. And walks to the locker room. And F.A. wins by disqualification. What is going on? Now, according to the article, Curtis Harper felt like he wasn't getting paid enough to do this. But here's the thing. The fact that you walked off and got DQ'd, you're not getting, probably not getting any kind of paycheck. Mm -hmm. So if you weren't getting paid well at all, you're not getting paid at all now. And no one's going to book a fight for you now. I was going to say, what, what's your, what's your, I was going to say, especially in a UFC boxing you know, arena ring kind of match. You're going to get a lot more respect if you go in there and try to go toe to toe and just get knocked out or get beat as opposed to, yeah, like Ryan said, you're walking out and trying to get more money. Who in their right mind is a promoter or anyways going to try to sign you and give you a, a fight? Yeah, no one's going to give you a contract. And pay, and pay you that. more than whatever he was getting, which apparently wasn't enough, which you're you're getting to play a, a sport for your job. At 13 and now six, but thirteen and five. You're not the most attractive, most attractive fighter, right? You have to actually win matches to be an attractive fighter. And not to mention, if Ryan's right about um, FA being undefeated, that's going to look good if you're fighting an undefeated guy. Even if you lose, I mean, the guy's undefeated. So if you beat him, you give him his first loss. But if you lose, you just lost to an undefeated guy. But at least you were in the ring. You went toe to toe, and it was only a six round fight, right? So it wasn't even a full thirteen. Yeah, maybe you get it. Which what? Okay, how does that work? Hmm. I don't know. I think thirteen is a title fight, and then six is just regular. Ah, uh, I guess it. I don't know, dude. I don't know enough about boxing, or maybe they agree to it. Oh, I'm not saying you know that. I just I've never. That's a huge. It's a drastic difference. It is a pretty big discrepancy. You're right. You know, it's. I just don't know enough about boxing to say anything worthwhile. I was like, I will. Uh, Are you looking it up? I will look it up because I'm so incompetent. No, you're computer. actually so incompetent. You're on top of it already moving to Nick's articles and stuff. It's crazy. I'm so impressed. Mm. Um, that was messed up. You just said. Was it though? Yeah. Go on. <laughs> Go on what? You just, said, you well, just called me like the king of the incompetent. Is that, essentially what you said. Okay, that is not at all what I said. I'm definitely getting... Uh, misquoted here, out of context. We can, we can play it back. Some you can play it back once I upload it. Yeah, I did not say those specific words, and you know that you are putting words into my mouth. I That's the only that, thing. I re- good because I didn't come over here for the, just this. <laughs> Why do you think I have the camera set up? This is this is on GoPro. Yeah. Oh. Dude. I know. I said last time we were putting this on GoPro, and then it didn't work. It is on YouTube though. 
our episode. Is it really? Episode 14 is on YouTube. That's legit. Episode 13 and episode 14 is on YouTube. There's just no video. It's just audio to a, a picture. I was able to get a picture from the video somehow. I was able to get a still, and then I just put audio behind it. That's you all know, I could do. You know what? That's really cool, man, though. You've progressed a lot with the podcast. And so I still remember it was about a year ago, maybe a year and a half ago. year and a half. And when you uh, first texted me about doing this stuff, and you've mm-hmm. definitely progressed from... I had no idea what I was doing. Yeah, from the just trying to get this stuff together to getting mixers and splinters or whatever, splitters and, you know, all those other headphones and jacks and GoPros and YouTubes and YouTubes and iTunes and whatever all that fancy, you know, on the line technology stuff is these days. Um, but no, man, I'm proud of you, dude. This is, yeah, look at where we're at now, dude. We got a nice little setup here with a mixer and a big TV so we can look up stuff and look up stuff, talk about videos and other stuff. We got how many mics? I've got four, four mics. So I can have four people on. Yeah, we had three set up, but obviously Chris couldn't make it. Chris is a high school football coach, so he had a late scrimmage today and had to watch film. So fortunately, he wasn't able to make it. But hopefully, he'll I don't know do one with me. Well, I was do say, a podcast. I, with I feel me. like Trey or somebody might come in again, and we'll have to. That's fine. I know. I wanted to ask him, Chris. I wanted to ask him about what's going on at LSU because they've had two quarterbacks depart. The yeah, program, is, and I wanted to ask him because he's a huge. He's from Baton Rouge. Yeah, he's a huge LSU, big fan. LSU guy. Um, and also I know he has some thoughts on the whole stardom, bench him, cut him mm-hmm. fiasco that has acquiesced. Um. So yeah. Yeah, I'm sure he'll be on now. Chris is a good guy. Hopefully. Yeah. Um. What do you think Big Smooth is doing right now? Is he? Do you think he's? Counting sheep. Uh, Counting sheep or Fortnite. That's probably my guess. Um, oh, God, Fortnite. I, have you played Fortnite? I've never. Mm, I shouldn't say never. I played it one time. Had no idea what the hell I was doing. Haven't played it since. I it's I don't play it too often. It is fun, though. I can see why it's so What's addictive. the point of it? It's, okay, I'm sure a lot of people have heard of this, but it's essentially Hunger Games. It, it's essentially a Hunger Games format. So... What you do it's is every man for himself. Well, so what you do is you have different you have different options when you're playing, but you can play either solo. So it's and it's usually it's up to 100 people. So it could be you against 99 other people. You could do duos, so 50 teams of two, or you can do squads, so 25 teams of four, or up to that amount. And what you do is you start in this bus in the sky. You a bus in the sky? Did you really just say that? I did. I did. Or a blimp, whatever it is. Anyways, a blimp would be more accurate. Well, you go, you go across the map. You just fly out of the blimp, fly out of the blimp. You land somewhere, and there's you know different places on the map. Whatever. There's resources you have to get, and there's like weapons that you gather. So there's wood, brick, and steel for resources to help build things, build you know um, other buildings and stuff to protect yourself or you know get across mountains, whatever you gotta do. And there's other weapons. So different, you know, colors represent different, you know, strengths of weapon. So you have the gray, which is the worst strength of a weapon, I guess. And then you have up to, like, the purple and gold, which are the strongest or most powerful weapons, I guess. And you pretty hmm. much you run around, and there's a storm that closes on you, so you have to keep moving. And uh, it's pretty much hard games, though. You just kill everybody. And what happens if you get caught in the storm? Well, so if you get caught in the storm, you lose your health. It just literally, like, just cuts your health down. Starts out slow, but then once you've been in the storm for a while, it starts taking more and more and more and more out the out your health. And so, do you mean, start with weapons? No, you start with nothing except for I. An so axe. it's literally like Hunger Games. You have to go out and I guess you start with an axe technically, just so you can. Cut can you down. kill people with that axe? You can. It's hard. I have done it before, but it's hard. Uh, you have to get right in the game where you land with someone. Else. Yeah, you have to land with someone else and then just bludgeon them. You know. Just go like Lizzie Borden on them. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, it's fun. It's addicting. It's fun. I don't play it too often. Um, but that's my guess. Big Smooth is either sleeping or Fortnite is my guess. Big Smooth. So, how are your parents doing, man? They're living the dream. Living the dream because they, the, they have a great son? Yes. <laughs> Good. And how's your sister? She's, she's well. Good. Good. Thanks for asking about my family. Yeah, no problem. 
No problem, man. I haven't seen him in a long time. So yeah. How are your parents? They okay? Good. Good. Yeah, mom's kind of semi-retired, so. <clears throat> semi-retired. Yeah, I mean. Is she working part-time or? Yeah, as of right now, no, but I'm sure maybe, you know, she'll want to maybe go back and do something. I don't know. She needed a break for sure, so she's she's living the dream per se, and, you know, her and her and dad are relaxing. Oh, I bet they are. <laughs> Shoot. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, so. They're doing they're doing all right. I mean, you know, so just like living day by day, man. Living <laughs> day by day. Yeah, I want to show you another video too. I just don't know how to title it. Um, did you ever see that video of like that robot? It's like walking on two two le- legs, I guess. I have not. I'll try and pull it up for you. Beautiful. Let's see this bad boy. I'm just going to type in robot. Ro- <laughs> you typed in robot? Yeah. Why would you type in robot walking in legs or something? You know, wouldn't that make more sense? Because I suck at computers, man. Just kidding. Oh, my God. That's not it. That's closer. Sophia the Robot? What is this? It's January 2018. Okay, let's check out Sophia. So, what is this shit? Um, Okay. Sophia the Robot. Oh my God. That is the scariest shit I've ever seen in my life. Pretty realistic. Is she face. dancing? I think so. She has a rubber. Dude, she's got a legit realistic looking face. Not gonna lie. That's what's scary. David, what are you doing, man? What in the fuck are you doing? Oh my god, that is that's horrifying. It's just creepy the way she walks. She walks better than I do. That's true. Oh my god. I don't even want to look up this one. Five creepiest things done by artificial intelligence. This wasn't even the video. Oh, my God. She's got teeth. Yeah, that's. Wow. That is definitely creepy looking. Oh, my God. She's answering questions. Dude, that's not far away, man. What? Okay, we're going to watch this one. This is messed up. We have to. We talked to Sophia, the AI robot that said it would destroy humans. Oh, my God. That's irony. David, what the hell have you done? She looks crazy. And she blinks. She blinks. I'm skeptical. Oh my god. (laughs) (laughs) He's not wrong, man. Dude, robots. Oh my god. 
I don't know if we'll still be alive, but at the end of the day, man, like the iRobot movies, all that stuff, I, dude, they're not, I don't think it's too far away. I really don't. I mean, technology is... Well, you know what the Turing test is, right? What is that? The Turing test? I've heard the term before, but could you explain it again? I'll, yeah, I'll have to look it up here. She's having a legit conversation right now, man. She's going back and forth. What? <laughs> She's honest. So the, the Turing test has to do with how, like, um, artificial intelligence responds to, like, emotion okay. and compassion. I'll have to look up the actual. This is freaking me out. Of course. Oh my god. Don't yeah, don't tell her anything. Oh my god. <laughs> she talks like she's a person. Oh my god, her facial expressions are creepy. Wow. That was interesting to watch. I never said it was going to destroy humans. Yeah, I was going to say, at least not in that clip. Maybe it was a different clip or something, but. Okay, we'll look up the. Lifelike hot robot. Oh my gosh. Yeah, we're not doing that. That was probably actually the end where she said it, probably. The Turing test. All right. It's a test of a machine's ability to exhibit intelligent behavior equivalent to or indistinguishable from that of a human. So this is the that's what they use on AI. They use the Turing test. And that's how we know how advanced they are. And I think I think it's a pass fail. You either pass the you either pass the Turing test and you exhibit intelligent behavior similar to a human being's, or you fail it and you're obviously a computer robot, artificial intelligence. I think I failed that test. <laughs> um, I think you're right. Okay, so yeah, I mean, okay, let's talk about it. What? What? I mean, what's your take on robots? Like, let's say, let's say, what are you? Twenty, almost twenty-seven. Yeah. Okay, let's say, let's say when you hit 45, 50 years old, let's say they come out with robots that are even more advanced than one you just saw. I mean, they will do chores, they will do errands, they will do a lot more than that. Would let's say you could buy these robots, like the ones in iRobot or whatever, you can have like assistants or whatever. Do you get a robot? Like, if you could get a robot as your assistant to do whatever, yes, you would. Yeah. Okay. Male, female, does it matter? It doesn't matter. It's a, it's a robot. I, just making sure. You I know. don't think you can assign a gender to a robot. Oh, well, you'd be surprised what you yeah, can assign, know. you know? Yeah. So anyways, um, okay, so what would you have it do? What, I mean, would you have it hang out with you? Would you have it do specific things? I mean... I would definitely, since it would be advanced, as you're saying, mm-hmm. I would definitely try to be a companion not like in a sexual way. Right. I would try to be friend the AI. So that way it views me as something that's friendly okay. to them. Mm-hmm. So that 
if some shit were to hit the fan with all the AI, some asshole scientist that, like Dr. David Hansen, that asshole, <laughs> like if he put some stupid code in there to where, like, if you do left, right, B, left, right, start, it turns <laughs> all the AI, like, like an iRobot where they all turn red right. and they start killing humans. Right. I would want it to embed in its memory that it's like when it views me, it's like, oh, that's my friend. I'm not going to hurt you. So it'll f- fucking spare me. Well, I mean. I wouldn't even make it do chores. I would make it like. Like watch s- Auburn games with you? Yeah, and I would just pour it like oil fucking drinks and shit. You know what I mean? With the solid ice cube? No, because it's water. It would damage it. I'm just asking, hey, I don't know. I don't know your life, man. I would try, I would do everything I could to befriend the robot. Okay. So it views me as a friend, never as an enemy. What about this? Robot dog for your kids. No, I've seen that episode of Black Mirror. I have not. Okay, when you watch Black Mirror, you need to watch the episode with the robot dogs and where it, they nearly exterminate the human race. And you will definitely think twice about having a robot dog because they go and they kill anything they find. So, nope, no robot dog, especially not for my kids, if I ever have kids. So, let me get this straight. The AI robot could, could, could possibly turn. So let's say there's a fail-safe for your whole, in fact, that it just views you as a friend. But you would not get a robot dog, but you'd be willing to have a robot human. Which, not robot human, sorry. We want to have a robot Whatever. <laughs> Not a robot dog. No. Because I've seen what robot dogs can do. I'm not willing to take that chance. That's fair. I mean, have you seen Terminator? No. Y- yeah. Okay. But it's Arnold Schwarzenegger. I know I know Arnold, Schwar- Arnold Schwarzenegger is, is a, just an, a massively strong human being, so I'm not scared. True. He will be back, though. Will he, though? I don't know. Strange, so, stranger things have happened. Yeah, but that's not as scary. So, what about you? What would you do? Would you allow a an artificial intelligence into your home to assist you? Jeez, I mean, I don't know. That'd be interesting. Would you make your artificial intelligence only have one quad as well? Um, I mean, yeah, you might as well, you know, like is like, you know, similar similarities is, is good to have in the home. Um, I don't know, man, that'd be interesting. I, I don't know if I could have a robot per se. I mean, I guess if they had foolproof way of making sure it wouldn't, you know, pull an eye robot and turn on you and kill you and right, your family. Right. I'd probably have to pass on that and a robot dog after what you just said. Um, <laughs> cause real dogs are better anyways. True. Um, but yeah, I, I'd have to probably pass on it, but I admit it would be interesting to have a robot that could like you play golf with, you know, watch, you know, watch games, you know, just chill with. I mean, it would be interesting for sure. It'd be interesting for sure, but I'd have to probably pass. I don't know. Just plus you could learn a lot from it. We could. Cause I mean, that thing Smart probably has access to maybe like, instead of being on the computer, you could just ask your AI a question. Uh, that's your Google home. Your, that's your, yeah, Alexa, I could yeah. find your an answer for you. Right then and there, and then you could have it teach you stuff. It's not bad. So, I definitely see the ups the upside to having artificial yeah. intelligence. But yeah, the whole Turing test thing, and what I just saw with that crazy bitch Sophia. Yeah, that was that. She freaked me out. Dude, she was really. I mean, that was. She was answering his questions, and the fact that she lied to him. She lied. She's, she's able to give her own answers. Able to do follow up questions on the. Well, that's fly. the other thing too. Is like, how do you know if they're if your AI is telling you the truth? I don't think you do. Uh, not based off that. She literally just flat out did it. That's and, scary. And again, there's no emotions, so you have no idea. You know, you can't tell if. That's scary. I, mean, I guess I could program those smiles and stuff in there, but. Have you seen Ex Machina? Uh, bits and pieces. My parents saw it. That's like the future of AI, and that freaks me out because that AI 
basically tricks that human that dude into into letting her free. Yeah, and wow. then she betrays him at the very and leaves him <laughs> stuck. Stone cold man. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, with a grain of salt, I guess. Um, but do you got anything else, dude? That was an interesting way to end it. If anything. No, I think no, I was good, man. Again, thanks for coming. Thanks for having me over. Um, yeah. Too bad that uh, yeah, too bad old Chrissy boy couldn't couldn't come. But just to recap, you would start Cam or Tim Tebow. You're are you still in the middle there? I mean, if if I had if I had to have in college, I'm starting Cam Newton, benching Tim Tebow, and again, just based off the fact that in terms of just mechanics wise. Can't I can I'll trust Cam to deliver more, and a better pass in a in a tougher situation than I can Tebow. Tebow had a great system with, with Urban Meyer, but the defense was not as good. I mean, with Auburn as it was with Florida, so I couldn't trust you know Tebow to probably get in a scoring match with with anybody. So yeah, Cam Moon's my starter. Yep, Tebow is on my bench. I'm literally yeah I'd cut Manziel twenty times over. Mm-hmm. He just yeah I'm sorry. I, I understand Trey's points and. Points for Johnny Manziel, I just, based off the other two. It's not convincing enough for you. No. I mean, and I guess it's tough because I have the outside bias in terms of, obviously, he has a alcohol addiction problem. He's got other problems going on. I mean, just and his, his career doesn't look like it's going in any right direction. But, yeah, just based off the just college alone, though, I'd still stick with, with Cam. Was one year at Auburn was, was, was good. And I like Tebow on the bench. and. Yeah. yeah. And yourself the same? Yeah. Start start Cam, bench Tebow, and cut Johnny. And I mean, coming into this, I was thinking Cam, Johnny, cut Tebow. But after looking at stats and all things considered, leadership qualities, mm-hmm. you know how, uh, I mean, being a quarterback, you have to you have to be able to get your team rallied around you. And you made a great point earlier about Tebow's infamous, I think it was 09, where he said in the locker or whatever his conference press conference he said the you're not gonna see a speech yeah to the media yeah I can't see Manziel no I can't see I can't see Manziel doing that no at any level I couldn't I just know I think he's just too arrogant which is you gotta have a swag like a Baker Mayfield swag I feel like it's a perfect swag to have perfect amount in my opinion I think he's got enough um, the crotch grab might have been a little too much that's funny though but uh, yeah. You have to have swag, but not too much swag. Right. Got to know how to control it or else. Correct level of swag. Got it. Yeah. But cool. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, I agree. Hope awesome. to see Chris uh, next time and hope to get to do it again. So yeah. Thanks, man. Definitely. And then we got Khabib and Connor. You're you're trying to, you're hoping McGregor gets it done. I would I would love to see McGregor, McGregor get it done, but, I mean, all in all, I hope it's a good fight. I hope nothing crazy happens before then. I hope they... I hope they started making their weight cut a couple weeks ago. I, I would I would hope ever since it was announced they've been planning this. Correctly. I just don't know they're walking they're walking around weight. Well, again, I think Connor's like one seventy five walking around. I'm pretty sure which you're is right. Twenty pounds. I mean, you could do twenty pounds over the summer. I just, I'm just worried that he again he hasn't fought in UFC in almost two years, and this this match has a little bit more hype and a little more emotions to it than a normal like a championship fight. I mean. Against um, Nate Diaz, I guess he had a little adrenaline pump too. So, he, I I trust Connor can do it. I just yeah, but he bounced back after that first after getting after getting submitted. He did, and he played it smart. He didn't get on the ground for with Nate until the fifth round with like ten seconds left, and he fell. And he won. Through. I mean, I definitely would give him, you know all the knockdowns he had in that fight. Oh no, he Connor definitely won that fight. Um, but yeah, again, and, and Nate Diaz is fighting again too. At the end of the year, I think. Yeah, good for Nate because he was suspended, wasn't he? For, uh, for no, he wasn't suspended. He just wasn't. He just wasn't fighting. Because you sure about? It? I could have yeah, sworn no, he had it. It was Nick. It was his brother. The domestic thing. Pretty sure it was well, his he brother. Has a bro- he has a brother. Nick Diaz. Hey, my cousin actually met Nate Diaz down in uh, California. Actually, yeah, California. Yeah, yeah. He's got a brother, Nick, who has been suspended for like f- he was suspended for like four years because of. Like a, mar- a marijuana thing. And I think he just got hit with another thing for a domestic dispute, but I thought those charges might have gotten dropped or something. No, Nate, Nate just hasn't been fighting because he hasn't gotten his title shot. 
It's what he I says he he wants to fight for a title, and I mean, I think he deserves a title shot. Well, I would say he's one of the best fighters, and he hasn't fought in so long. I know it has been a really long time. And he's fighting. God, who's he fighting? Dustin Poirier. That sounds right. That does sound right. Because Dustin's been, he's been kind of an up and down guy, and he's kind of bounced back. He had a huge win over, was it Gaethy? Did he just fight Justin Gaethy? Uh, or was it Alvarez? I was going to say, I, I do not know I can't one. remember, dude. And you're right, yeah. So, yeah, my bad. I didn't know he had a brother. That's my apologies. Yeah. I did not Nick know that. Diaz, man. And it starts with an N. It's four letters. I just, yeah, that's yep. my bad. They're both, they're from San Francisco, I think. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I think that sounds right. No, but again, man, dude, again, proud to you here with this. I always love being on your podcast. One of my favorite things to do for sure. It's always a treat. Um, yeah, man. I just again, and I love that little little battle. We well, not a little battle, but a little, a little back cro- and forth. Little we got going with I, Trey. Like, I like that. I think it's always good to have a little little discussion. Mm-hmm. You know, proper reasonable Trey, discussion. You got good points, man, but I think we got better points. And again, if if you want to have Manziel on your team, that's fine. We're going to win championships, and you won't. That's fine. Yeah. You know, so, but again, I'd love to, hopefully he comes back with something, hopefully he comes up with another question. I'd love to have a little more discussion again. Yeah. So. Me too. Thanks, man. I appreciate it, bud. Thanks, buddy. All right. Till next time.